Hello, and welcome to another episode of Real World Analytics, or What Schools Don't Teach You. This is another installment of my coffee series, but this is going to be a bit different than most of the other ones. This isn't about something I found on LinkedIn. This is about me and my channel, and I wanted to demonstrate some of the concepts that I've been talking about and demonstrate that I'm practicing what I'm preaching. If you look at a lot of data science organizations, they may be advising on how to set up analytics, how to do all these other things, but the institutions themselves don't have good analytics, which always amuses me. And rather than just being amused, I've decided to try to do something about it. So I, this is going to be subscriber only if I can figure out how to make that setting, but I'm not going to be publishing it publishing it on LinkedIn or whatever. So I trust my trustee. I trust you all have a cup of coffee or something. And let's let's go through this. So starting with the kind of process starting at the end. At the end of all this, I want to have some actions that I can take about my channel. As a data scientist, you may be asked for actionable insights. That's not far enough. And one of the challenges you're going to face is say, okay, here's actionable insights. What are the actions you're taking? And reviewing the data and taking no action is still an action. So part of that, that struggle is real. And I want to go through why it might be convenient for me to say, huh, that's interesting, all that's actionable, but I'm not gonna do anything. Going a step up, I, I wanna reassess my goals. What is it I'm trying to do with this channel? What am I aiming for? How is all that working and stuff? And before that, I wanna get the data. So I'm using two main sources of data. The first is my YouTube channel itself. I'll put a copy of it here. This is my dashboard with the few latest videos that I've posted. You can see I have about a thousand views, about 40 subscribers. I don't know that thousand views, if that's cumulative, if that's last month, but there it is. And then the last few videos I've posted, you can see that the most recent one has about 15 views. Before I shared that on LinkedIn, it was two. So sharing things on LinkedIn is a good way to get some exposure to get your materials looked at, etc. If I go down to view all my videos, it'll take me to another web page. Here we go. You can see I have two pages and just thumbing through. You can see my coffee series, my Kaggle series. In general, my Kaggle series does better than my coffee series. So tagging things with Kaggle has some outcome and it has some benefit to me in terms of number of views. There's the real world analytics kind of class. Well, it's more formal with me with PowerPoint, which does about the same, even though it's a lot older. Interestingly, the, um, the longer talks that I've given, so modeling with impact pitfalls of machine learning and breaking the bottleneck all have more views, but that's not really fair because breaking the bottleneck has been up the longest, um, almost two years ago a little over two years ago with you know 200 plus views. So that's all very good, but this isn't the only kind of source of data. I also have data from LinkedIn. I'll put up a few things here. First of all, we have one of the recent videos that I've shared. You can see it's been seen by about 600 people in, in my network. It's gotten a few likes. And if I compare that to uh, something I did with making Pokemon all the different points, it's a little confronting that my Pokemon has been viewed by twice as many people and gotten more engagement than just um, something that I've spent quite a bit of time putting together, sharing, etc. It's a little, yeah, it's not the best feeling in the world. And then finally, I have something where I shared a package with Party Kit, which has more engagement in terms of likes is about the same as Pokemon, but a few more views. So I, I can see all this and I don't want to take the action of, huh, Pokemon is better than all my videos. I'm going to be a bit distraught, but rather I want to gain some learnings from that. Things with pictures on LinkedIn tend to get more engagement, whether that's due to the LinkedIn algorithm or whatever. So whatever I'm doing in terms of my future videos, I want to have some static images that I can show. And that's a little different than what I was doing now, because now it's all about the video. It's all about the discussion. It's not about the visualization. So one of the things I'm learning from this is if I take my video and point more toward visualization, start talking about visualization, visualizations and how to engage with management using different visualizations, that might be one way to help. Now, I've always thought that my channel is going to be a bit of a challenge anyway. 
because the data science field isn't that big. When you're within your data science bubble, it might look big, but relative to, say, a lot of World of Warcraft creators, YouTubers that I'm looking at that have thousands of videos, I was never going to equal that. If I can get up to a couple hundred, I'll, I'll be quite happy. And secondly, when I was talking with some friends about what do I want for my channel, my idea was new data scientists might view this and they might get some ideas about, okay, maybe it isn't just technical, maybe I should be on the lookout for different things. This business acumen, how does it work? What are some of the challenges? And I had a really nice discussion with someone that I've been helping try to transition between academic and academia and industry. And I asked him, you know, what was I helpful? And he said, well, yes. And I said, okay, well, what was helpful? What could I have done better? And he said something really true and really gave me some, some reassurance that everything was, was being helpful, which is my goal. And he said, well, the things you told me, like he heard them, but he didn't really understand them until he was in that situation and he was going to interviews and he was reflecting on the things he said in the interviews and how it tied into what I was saying. And one of my goals for the channel is that people come in, they get some insight, they start their data science job, they've had the insight, they then see the insight applied and they say, oh, okay, I get it now. And then they leave the channel. I don't expect to have kind of long-term viewers other than professional colleagues and friends that want to discuss things things with me rather than just learn something and move on. And that's been one of the real benefits I found is that I'm having those conversations of, of the 40 subscribers to my channel. Most of those are friends of mine, but through the channel, I've started to change from interaction with friends to, to starting some professional interactions to talk about data science, to talk in more detail about my job. A lot of them are data scientists or business intelligence or um, related fields, shall we say, and they're interested to compare and contrast my life to their life. And in general, the, the LinkedIn community has been a great discovery, if, if you will. I wasn't going in to try to become a part of a LinkedIn community because I didn't know it exists, and it does. So if you're aspiring to be a data scientist, start making some posts. Start posting images of visualizations you like. It'll, it, it'll help you. And so kind of in summary, my goals are still the same that I want to help people. I want to help people, but I, I need to reach them. But it's going to be difficult for me to reach them because what I'm pitching isn't exactly your standard data science. I'm not doing the five things you really need to know to be a data scientist. I'm not doing here's some definitions in R. And so based on the engagement with things that I have photos, I'm going to start doing more things with photos. I'm going to start talking more about visualization, start talking about engaging with management that way and reviewing some packages. I'm probably going to start with Google Viz or start with, oh, that Pokemon thing. Let, let me show you how I did that and do a few more tricks to make it more interesting and more data science-y. So that's a brief update for my channel. If you have any other recommendations or anything, if I've been helpful to you, uh, please do let me know. It's, it's always reassuring. Even in the LinkedIn post that I shared, someone did comment, hey, you know, check this guy out. I always appreciate things like this, and I would rather reach five or six people and make a difference in their lives than be one of these people with thousands and thousands of subscribers who leave comments like, hey, great video. You know, if that's what you want to say. Just hit the like button. I'm not I'm not in it to farm comments and farm likes and everything, but I do want to help people. And so if this has been helpful, contact me personally, leave us a like, leave us a comment, whatever. I would appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time on Real World Analytics, where what schools don't teach you. Goodbye.